Good morning, everybody. How are you? Thanks for waiting around. Sorry we're late. So this year, this year for the UFC, this has been the greatest end of a year we've ever had. We had the uh, we had the Pettis fight in Henderson. We just had Jones versus Gustafsson. We have uh, Cain Velasquez versus Junior Dos Santos coming up in October in Houston. We got GSP versus Johnny Hendricks right here at the MGM, and we are ending the year with Ronda Rousey, Misha Tate, and Chris Weidman and Anderson Silva. Who has the first question? Raise their hand. They'll give you a microphone. John, uh, for Chris, morning. please. Chris, uh, oh, yeah. how many times have you uh, had a chance to, to go back and watch the fight since the first fight? How many times have you watched it over and over? Uh, I watched it, I can't tell you how many times, but a bunch of times. Probably uh, the first two weeks after the fight, and I haven't really watched it since. But a lot of times, I don't know, maybe 50. I'll, I'll throw that out there. And when you watch the fight, what's your evaluation of it? You know, is it... A mistake that he made or a perfect performance by you? What is your evaluation of the fight? You know, I think I, I went out there and, and, and worked hard and, and went for everything that I felt. You know, in the first round, I went for the hill hook and, and knee bar. You know, didn't get it, but I went for it. Uh, you know, I felt a little sluggish in there. You know, I, took, I had a year off. I had two back-to-back -back surgeries. Um, so I, was, I, I didn't feel 100%, but I, was, I still, you know, felt good enough to get the win. And I'm excited to have a full camp and be able to, you know, not have to nurse an injury and excited for this next fight. And so much of the talk afterwards, it seemed like immediately it was about what Anderson did wrong versus what you did right. Did that frustrate you at all, or did you kind of expect that that was going to be the public reaction? No, I, I didn't mind at all. You know, he deserves that type of respect. He's, uh, you know, greatest of all time. Uh, people can't fathom the fact that he lost. So, obviously, uh, I knew going to that fight we were going to have to have a rematch. Uh, I was going to have to prove people wrong again. Uh, even after this next fight, uh, when I win, there's still going to be a lot of datas out there. Um, there's always, there's, no matter what, there's always going to be excuses out there for, you know, why you got the W, and that's just part of the sport. And for Anderson, if I could, please, uh, I'm curious, uh, Anderson, how many times has he watched the fight since it first happened and what his evaluation was? Was it just a fantastic performance by Chris, or does he feel like he made a mistake? So I watched the fight in, in the three times. My coach watched him more. And what's your thought when you watch it? Was it just an amazing performance by Chris, or was it just a mistake by, by you? The Chris is new champion, man. You need to respect this guy, bro. Come on. And, and one last one, Anderson. Before the fight, you mentioned you know, the pressures of being a champion uh, and how difficult it was. Has there been any positives in not being a champion? Has life been any easier or, or less pressure-filled for you? Nope. Hello. Uh, my first question is for Anderson. Uh, during the fight, Chris was able to take you down right away in the beginning. How much have you worked on your wrestling or takedown defense preparing for this fight? Uh... I train the Grand Mass Jedi now. Yeah, Yoda. And what was the reaction from the Brazilian home crowd when you came home and for the first time you didn't have the belt? Normal. Normal. I'm Brazilian. Normal. And for you, Chris, um, what has changed for you since you've been the champion?
walk into that cage. Uh, every day I got to train as hard as I can uh, and then go out there and, and just go as hard as I can. Um, and uh, any type of instincts that I'm feeling at the time, I got, I got to go for it. Otherwise, I'm going to have regrets. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be going for the finish the whole time. That's just the way I fight. And just one last question for you. You had mentioned that you felt sluggish in the last fight, not 100% from the shoulder. Uh, if this fight were to go five rounds, have, do you feel that that rust has been shaken off? And do you feel that you would have the durability to last the entire fight this time around? Yeah, no, I was prepared to go five rounds in the last fight. Um, I, didn't, I didn't necessarily feel tired. I just felt a little you know, off. I felt a little sluggish, uh, a little slower. Uh, but you know, I'm also going against Anderson Silva, who's fast and quick. So, it, I mean, it could be a combination of that. Um, but <clears throat> Dana, this is for you. Uh, <clears throat> initially, when you saw the fight, you, you had feelings about it. Now, time has passed. Do you look at it any different, or have your feelings changed about the, how it ended now as opposed to when it, when it initially ended? No, this was one of those fights where uh, people were talking about this fight a month after. I mean, the buzz about this fight was huge. And, I, I, you know, obviously I'm up here, we're promoting the fight. But I'm telling you, we've got a great end of the year. Tons of amazing fights. The fights that just happened last Saturday with Jones and Gustafsson was awesome. One of the most exciting fights I've been to in a long time. And I'm honestly, when I say this, I mean it. I can't wait for this fight. This is one of those fights that how the first one ended, you know, there were a lot of questions with Anderson's age and everything else. Anderson didn't look old. Anderson didn't look like he didn't belong in there. Weidman came out and did what he did. When the music plays and these guys are walking out December 28th and they start to come toward the octagon and they get in there, I, I just, I don't know if I've been this excited for a fight ever in the UFC. I can't wait for this rematch. A uh, couple questions for Chris, please. How's it going? Um, so. What have, what have you heard more of after that fight? Have you heard more praise for you being the first person to knock off Anderson or more doubt because of kind of the way it happened with him kind of toying around in the cage? Uh, I think it changed. In the beginning, there was a lot of praise, and then a lot of the, uh, and then a lot of the doubters, you know, came out. I think I see a lot of that now. You know, I send a tweet, and then I get hit up with a million people. You get to die next fight, angry Anderson Silva's going to come out and smoke you. You know, you stink. You know, so I see a lot of that right now, but, you know, that's all good. That's what makes this sport awesome. Uh, whether they're rooting for Anderson Silva or me, uh, I love the fans. Um, you know, he, deserve, he deserves all the credit in the world. I mean, he's been doing this so much longer than me. He's done so much for the sport. Uh, he's had crazy finishes uh, in his time, and he, de he deserves all that, no matter if he gets knocked out or not. I know you said the, the doubt doesn't bother you, but kind of how do you handle it? I mean, do you use it as motivation, or do you just kind of ignore it altogether? I have a lot of motivation uh, just stemming from myself uh, and, and different things, you know, family and, and, and other things like that. But definitely, it motivates me. You know, I want to prove people wrong. Uh, I like being the underdog. I like having that, that, that feeling where people think I'm going to lose and I prove them wrong. And uh, one question for Anderson, please. Uh, Anderson, last time we saw you here in Vegas after the fight, you said you didn't want to fight for the belt anymore. You weren't interested in a rematch. Uh, what changed your mind? So I have the new contract. In my contract, I have nine more fights. That's it? Nothing else? His new contract's pretty motivating. Anderson, qual sua maior motivação para essa luta? My family, my team, and my fans. Anderson, você pode falar um pouquinho... Sobre a pressão, antes você reclamou muito da pressão que você sofreu em função de ser o campeão e de ficar tanto tempo né, com essa pressão de sempre ser o melhor. Depois que você perdeu o cinturão, qual é a pressão mais difícil de lidar? É a pressão de ter perdido o cinturão e de, de, de ter que lidar com as críticas? Ou é a pressão de ser o campeão e ter que ser sempre o melhor? She said, uh, it seems like uh, you had a lot of pressure when you were champion, but I want to find out from you, is there more pressure now that you're not champion or was there more pressure when you were champion? <laughs> so, uh, I know I have more pressure now because Chris is a new champion, huh? I'm working hard for back the belt for me in Brazil, but I know I have more pressure. Does it feel better now? What Does it say? feel better now that you have yeah, more pressure? Yeah, I'm very happy. And 
Chris, are you going to change something for your uh, training, I mean, for this fight, or are you going to keep the same strategy? No, pretty much the same strategy. Uh, the only difference is around this time, uh, before the last fight, I was still, you know, nursing an injury, and I wasn't able to like, improve. And right now, I'm able to still work out and, and, and improve every day. So uh, that's really the only difference. As far as strategy, uh, it's kind of the same for every one of my fights. Just, you know, walk forward, and, and I try, you know, to see. It's a, you know, it's a chess game out there. You know, if, I, if he thinks I'm doing one thing, I'm going to do the other. For Chris, um, right here. Don't take this the wrong way. I don't want to suggest at all that a win, o any win over Anderson Silva is easy. But I, I wonder, like, after the fight, just the way it went, was there any thought that went through your mind, like, wow, that was not as difficult as I thought it was going to be? No, I, it was difficult. I'm not saying it was uh, easy, you know. Uh, you know, he's, a, he's as good as everybody thinks he is. You know, he's, he's a, known as the greatest of all time for a reason. It's no fluke. Uh, you know, he, he's, a, he's a stud, and I'm expecting a war in the next fight, and, you know, I'm hoping for a finish. You know, this question is usually asked of the loser of these types of fights, but what was the biggest thing that you learned about Anderson? Obviously, you were prepared for him, and you watched a lot of film on him, but be, actually being in the cage with him, what was the biggest thing you learned from that experience? Uh, what did I learn? Uh, you know, he threw leg kicks. I didn't expect him to throw uh, leg kicks as much. We didn't really train for that. Uh, the one guy in my camp who throws a lot of leg, hit, leg kicks was, he had a shin issue, so I didn't really get leg kicked during the camp. Uh, I expected him to be a little bit more nervous of the takedowns with that. Uh, so that's, I, I think that's the one thing that I was like, oh, was, all right, I got to start checking these leg kicks. Uh, but besides that, uh, you know, he's, I expected him to be awesome, and, and he is. And just one question for you, Anderson. It seems like you don't feel like Chris is getting the respect he deserves. I've seen you say that to, to several reporters over the last few months that, you know, respect this guy as the champion. What, why don't you think that he's getting the respect? Is it stories that you've read, or, or why, do you, why do you keep saying that? I don't know. I don't know. But sometimes the people watching the UFC... The older people like with C, but no respect the champion. The Chris is new champion. The people need you respect this guy because the guy kill me. It's normal. This is the champion, guys. I need you respect. Thank you. Thank you. Dana, just one question for you. You gave you gave media members some crap about their pound for pound rankings when we were in Toronto. I'm just wondering, like, can you name your top five pound for pound? I guess it's been a while since we've really gotten your overlook of what the pound for pound rankings look like, and you got two guys who might be in there right now. Yeah, um, you know, Chris Weidman. I don't want to not respect him. Anderson just said to respect him, but uh, I, I, I wouldn't catapult him into the top five with, with, with one win over, I, even though it's a huge win, but I would still have my top five, John, John Jones, Anderson Silva, GSP. Uh, I, I'm telling you, Hennon Barrow is in there somewhere. Hennon Barrow has won 21 fights in a row, hasn't lost in over eight years, and, and does it spectacularly. Uh, all those in there, you know, just off the top of my head. John? Chris, um, obviously in the build-up to the first fight, you were super respectful. You're being very respectful now. But you did have that outburst of emotion uh, after, after the victory where you, you screamed a little bit of expletives there and that sort of thing. Was, was that just, you know, a, a moment that happened that kind of surprised even you that it came out? Or was that something that you were kind of holding on to and keeping underneath the surface all, all the time? Oh, uh, no. It, yeah, it, it kind of just came out in that fight. Uh, I got to the point where, you know, he was, he was uh, you know, torn to me, torn to me, torn to me, which we expected, and we had guys doing during the, during the camp. But I felt like he was excessive with it to the point where uh, I, f I felt like he was excessive for not really doing any damage to me. And I'm just like, you know, what are you, what are you doing? And I just got to the point I was like, you know, I got frustrated, and I just wanted to hit him. Ultimately, that kind of seemed to have worked out in your favor. So the second time around, is that something you try to stay away from and keep that emotion out of it, or does it... You know, did that end up being kind of a, a helping factor for you? I mean, it, it helped in this fight. Uh, so I don't know. I can't control, how, uh, you know, the way I'm going to feel in the, the octagon next time. I uh, can't control what he's going to do.
But uh, I'm just going to go off my instincts. And at the time, I just felt like it was the right thing to do to move in on him. I know he was trying to fake like he, I didn't hurt him on one of the shots. and Or, or he was faking that I hurt him. And uh, I, just, I just felt like it was the right time. I felt like I would catch him off guard, and I just sprung in there and went for it. Thanks, and for Anderson, please, um, so much was made of, of the interviews he gave, but in the week to the fight and how he was acting, and it seemed a little bizarre. Uh, first, was there any connection between his behavior and the performance, and does he have any regrets at all for how he handled himself in the week before the fight? For Anderson, you know, there was a lot made of, like, his interviews and saying Chris Weidman would be the champ. Does he have any regrets that he, that he handled that way, and was it connected at all? No. Why? Sometimes I'm joking. <laughs> it's normal. And is there any feeling now, I know you have nine fights left on a contract, but is there any feeling at all that this fight could determine the, the rest of your future, that if you, if you don't win this fight, there's, there's nothing left for you? So, uh, I have nine more fights, and my focus is the, my rematch for Chris, and the new wonders is come, bro, trust me. <laughs> All right, wanna, you guys good? You want to start asking fan questions? You wanna, Adam? For Chris, l last time you went into the fight, I know you believed you were going to win, but not that many people believed in you, and you kind of flew under the radar like most of Anderson's opponents. Do you feel that you kind of lost that advantage going into this, that you know, now you're the champion and you don't really have that ability to fly under the radar like you did before? Well, I'm kind of still flying under the radar. You know, a lot of people still think, you know, uh, you know he was playing around last fight. This time he's not going to play around, and I'm, you know, I'm in big trouble. Uh, so there's a lot of people like that, uh, but no, I haven't really even thought of that, to be honest with you. Um, I still have my, the support group I have around me. That's all I really, you know, focus on. Uh, you know, I got a great family. I got great coaches, uh, great fans. And that's, that's, what, that's what, that, where, where my focus is as far as like, support. And all the other things that come with being a champion, I mean, parades and appearing at, you know, football games like we saw the other day. Uh, have you been able to kind of compartmentalize maybe that stuff and say, it, I have this stuff, but I also have to get ready for a fight still. It's, you know, kind of a balance you have to find as champion. Yeah, I'm uh, very, uh, I'm not a great multitasker. I only focus on one thing at a time. So that stuff is just kind of, it's not even a focus at all. It, I'm just uh, very focused on this next fight. Uh, and that's really it. All right, let's take the mic around to some of the fans. And want to start back there? Go ahead, honey. What do you got? Somebody want to ask? Oi, Anderson. Woo! Eu <laughs> É o Brasil aqui torcendo para você. A gente está muito na expectativa muito grande da próxima luta. Como que estão seus treinos para a próxima luta? Estão bem legais. Eu estou treinando bastante. Estou bem focado, feliz de poder lutar mais uma vez, de poder é, tentar recuperar o cinturão. O Brasil feliz. te ama, viu? Estamos torcendo junto Obrigado. com você. <risos> Obrigado. Yeah, that was his longest answer of the day. We got to know what he said there. Yeah, she said, uh, she said that Brazil loves you, Brazil's behind you, and we want to know how your training has been for this fight. Uh, and he answered that my training's been going well. I'm very excited to go out there and bring my belt back. And, uh, and then she answered back, Brazil loves you. Weidman said, Jesus Christ, did all the Brazilians fly in for this press conference? <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the next question? Uh, speaking of Jesus Christ, Chris, you, uh, you seem very humble and very grounded and very appreciative of what you've done. And you mentioned God in the ring. Is your faith a big part of your confidence and your calmness in the ring? Uh, 100%. You know, it all actually all stems from that. Uh, you know, God give, gave me these gifts, and I'm just trying every day to work, uh, work as hard as I possibly can with them. Uh, and then before I'm walking into that cage, you know, I just say a prayer and put it all into his hands. All I have control over is, is how hard I work in that cage. The rest is going to be up to God. And his plan. So it uh, takes the pressure off me. It's all on him. Uh, the question is for um, Anderson. He, uh, 
Yeah, here. go ahead, buddy. Right here. <laughs> Okay, uh, my question is, uh, I know that in the past you um, uh, were um, much better than your opponents and you were playing with them and did, uh, this playing with your opponents didn't work very well in the last fight. Are uh, you have any regrets of doing that? Are you planning on keeping the same style? No, this is my style, and I'm working hard for a long time in UFC. I have the, the, the great fights in here. It's the same position and the same style. I don't change nothing. Hey, this uh, question is for Chris. Certainly all respect to Anderson Silva, the greatest of all time. Chris, as you prepare for the rematch, are you going to bring anybody else into the camp to work on uh, a new wrinkle or new approach to your uh, strategy against Anderson? Uh, I, as far as right now, we have no plans to bring anybody uh, too different than from last camp. Uh, we had some guys, uh, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, who fought this past weekend. He came in. He had some great kicks and uh, some unorthodox stuff that Anderson does. Uh, so and, he, and he's uh, a fast, fast guy on his feet. So we brought him, uh, brought him in last time. We had some uh, Muay Thai kickboxers, some uh, you know uh, Olympic level boxers. We brought in. So we br we brought in some really good guys just from almost the New York area, a couple places, uh, a couple other places, but uh, nothing, nothing else really. Okay. Hello, Anderson. Here. <laughs> e aí, beleza? <laughs> É, todo mundo criticou muito, falou falta de humildade, de humildade. E só que assim, você tem uma ginga brasileira ali na hora de lutar. E aí eu queria saber se isso realmente é, você fala que é o seu estilo de luta, mas faz, você faz um personagem ali na hora também? Não, ali não dá para fazer personagem não. Ali dentro o negócio é sério. É... Assim, logo depois da luta, é... Eu recebi várias críticas de várias pessoas, mas é que é, eu entendo até porque ninguém sobe lá para lutar, né? Ninguém treina quatro meses e, e sabe o que, que a gente passa. Eu não, não treinei quatro meses para ir lá e tomar um soco e perder. Eu cometi um erro que foi ficar com as pernas paralelas e que está sendo corrigido. Fora isso, eu vou continuar fazendo o que eu sempre fiz. Você vai mostrar quem manda, né? Bom, quem manda é um homem lá em cima, né? Então, eu vou esperar, vou treinar forte, como sempre, e vou tentar vencer de novo. She basically said that, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, criticize, you know, after the fight, how you were playing around. Um, do you think that that's really your style of fighting or is it part of your personality? And he said, no, there's nothing about my personality in there. I go in there and I fight and uh, I committed an error. And my error was is that I stopped with my feet parallel to each other, which is being fixed right now. And he took advantage of that position. And then she said, so that, does that mean that you're going to run things now? And he said, I don't run things. It's the man upstairs that runs everything. Anderson. Uh, Anderson, aqui. Anderson. Anderson Silva. Yeah. Aqui. Quando, quando você perdeu, você falou que não sabia se, se ia ter revanche, que você estava feliz, como você disse, agora está feliz, está tá tranquilo, sem pressão nas costas. Uh, o que está te fazendo fazer revanche? O cara é que está mandando? Ou, porque se você ganhar, vai voltar tudo de novo. He said, uh, after the fight, uh, you mentioned about the rematch. Uh, and, uh, you know, you mentioned about the rematch that you didn't want it, that you felt there was a lot of pressure off your back. What made you change? And he said, was it the bald guy that made you change? <laughs> então, vai começar tudo de novo, cara. Eu vou ter que... Vai começar tudo de novo. Vai ser aquela loucura tudo de novo. Então, é, faz parte, né, do trabalho. Eu, eu amo fazer isso, né. É, quando eu comecei a, a treinar... É, eu nunca pensei que eu ia chegar onde eu cheguei hoje. Eu sempre achei que eu ia ser tão bom quanto os meus professores. Eu ia dar aula e etc. Mas Deus me trouxe para esse caminho. Então eu tenho que aproveitar e, e o que foi bom eu ter perdido para entender o quanto 
é, é, Deus é, foi importante na minha vida durante todo esse tempo, né? E ele me deu um presente ao qual eu, de certa forma, é, esqueci um pouco disso, né? Que é, o, que é o título de ser campeão e tal. Mas agora eu entendi como é que funciona, né? A gente está sempre aprendendo e eu entendi bem. E agora, com certeza, muita coisa vai mudar. Said, you know, I, I love what I do, and uh, you know, and I've always loved what I did. But when I started training, I never imagined that I would get to the point that I'm at today. Um, I always imagined that you know I would hopefully be as good as my instructors and be able to teach class. But um, you know, I never thought that I was gonna have the success that I've had being the UFC champion. And I think God really helps me uh, and teaches you all the time. And I I realized that I didn't uh, appreciate or I didn't. Uh, value what I had and uh, I can tell you that now God works in mysterious ways and now I realize what I had and I'm going to focus to go back and get what I had cool go ahead Anderson aqui direto da Bahia liga lá bichinha oxente yes muita carajá e pimenta oxi eu como todos os brasileiros é Fiquei muito desapontada. Lógico, isso é que está sendo repetido várias vezes. Me xingou vezes. na internet também? Com certeza. Ah. Na, verdade, na verdade, eu não quero fazer uma pergunta. Eu quero te fazer um pedido. Diga lá, vai. Ganhe, ganhe, ganhe. Derruba esse cara no primeiro round. Ela basicamente disse... She says, like a lot of the Brazilians, she said, you know, I was pretty, pretty upset with, with what happened. And then Anderson says, well, you one of the people that uh, cussed me out on the Internet? And he said, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and she says, I don't really have a question. I, 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 I'm asking you um, a, a favor, and that's to go out there and knock this guy out in the first round. Eu vou tentar, tá bom? I try, I try. Promise. Chris? What's your prediction for the final result of the rematch? Uh, you know, that's what's great about this sport. I have no idea. You know, I have no idea what's going to happen in there. Uh, I'm going to be going for the finish. Uh, he's obviously going to be going for the finish. It's going to be a crazy fight. We're both winners. We both want to win. Uh, that's what's going to make this fight awesome. I have, absolutely have no idea. I got no inside information for you. Uh, whether it's a submission, knockout, TKO, no idea. We'll take a couple more. Anybody? No? Nobody got any? Over here? Right here, honey. What do you got? Give her a mic. Yeah. Oh, now no? Scared you? All right, sorry. <laughs> Is that it? You guys got anything else? We good? Thanks for coming, everybody. We appreciate you. We'll see you December 28th.